Hello and welcome to Have You Seen This App.com. This is Paul and this is a very exciting day today because today Apple released iOS 4.2 for the iPad, the iPhone, and the iPod Touch. Now obviously the most anticipation was 4.2 on the iPad, so I'm going to show you a lot of the new features of iOS 4.2 for the iPad, for example. And one of the most exciting features is the multitasking. I'm going to show you how that works. To access it, you just double tap your menu button for your iPad. And it gives you a menu here, and all of these programs on this bar are programs I've recently opened and they're still actually running in the background. So the cool thing is, for example, this Yahtzee program. Normally when I load up Yahtzee, it'll take 20 to 30 seconds for the program to load and uh, kind of get into a new game and having to start a new game. But watch what happens when I tap Yahtzee. It automatically brings me right back into my game. It didn't have to take 20 or 30 seconds to load because it's still running in the background with this multitasking and fast app switching environment. So anytime you open an app, it's going to show up on this bar and it's going to keep running in the background. Now Apple will automatically, you know, get rid of an app and uh, unload it from the memory if it's taking up too much memory. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you do ever want to actually unload something manually from the memory, you probably won't ever have to. But if you want to, you can just hold that button down and then hit the little red icon and that will unload it from the memory and that's all there is to it. But like I said, you probably won't have to do that much if ever. Now also if you scroll to the right, you'll notice there's a play button and a forward and reverse. There's a volume bar here so you can change the volume and then also a screen brightness. You can raise or lower the brightness of your screen right there from that menu. Now to the far left is the orientation lock. It used to be up here, an actual hard-coded button. That's been changed to mute, which I don't like. I wish they would have left it alone at orientation lock. So now, if you do want to lock or unlock your screen orientation, you have to double tap, scroll over, and then hit that button. So that's where that is now. So let's try out some multitasking. Let's load Pandora Radio, for example. Okay, we have Pandora loaded, and I'm going to just tap the home button, open an internet window, and surf the internet, and listen to music. How cool is that? Now I can also double tap, bring up the multitasking bar, and pause the music. I can lower the volume, I can hit play. And I can be doing other things on the iPad while the music is playing in the background. So, you know, this is what we've all been waiting for. Again, true multitasking. You could even, you know, skip to songs on Pandora. And then again, pause it. And if you want to just exit Pandora completely, you don't have to, but you can do it that way as well. So again, that is true multitasking on the iPad. I'm very excited for that. Another new feature for the iPad is folders. For example, here's a food folder. It's got a lot of different apps that involve food and they're all organized in one place. So I'm going to show you how to actually create your own folders. But I wanted to show you in addition to having folders, you can also have them on your main bar. Here's one of my folders called Other and that is actually showing up on my main bar. So you don't have to have only apps, you can actually have a folder on that main bar as well, just by dragging it. Also, by the way, Game Center, it was on the iPhone uh, and still is, but it's now available for the iPad in iOS 4.2 as well. So let's show you how to make your own folders. And I really like folders because it really helps organize things so much better. Here's a folder for games, for example, that I've created, and it's just so simple to use. But let's go ahead and make one, um, and I'm going to just make one here with my Barnes & Noble Reader, and I'm going to actually make one 
with Audible and Barnes and Noble. So you just hold your finger down and just drag it over and drop it on top of another app that you want to be in the same folder. And that's all there is to it. It puts those apps in a folder just like that. And then you can, it'll suggest a name to you based on what the app is, or you can hit that X and just type in whatever you want. You can call it whatever you want. And hit done, and then your, your start button, in, and that's it. We now have a folder called Books and Audio, and if we tap that, there we go. That's how easy it is. Now, if you want to just add something to that existing folder, we could just hold it down and just drag it over and just drop it and there you go and now it's got a picture of all three apps on the folder screen and then to access it you just tap it and then you can run one of those apps and tap it again to bring it back now also in the folder view you can actually move apps around so for for example if you wanted ski ball to be up here you can do that you just hold it down move it around you can arrange these any way you want within the folders as well now, one thing is, let's say you want to delete a folder. It's actually not as easy as it could be because you can't delete a folder with, with apps in it. So, for example, if we wanted to delete the games folder, we would have to drag each app out of the folder first before we could actually delete the folder. Once the last app was dragged out, then the folder would automatically delete. So. You know, it could be quicker to delete folders, but unfortunately it's not, but that's okay. I still love folders, and it'll allow you to really organize your apps and have a much cleaner looking screen and find things much, much easier. Okay, some other new features are the error, print, and error play. So for example, we're on a web page here, and if we tap this little link next to the web page, there's a little print button. And so now, thanks to iOS 4.2, you can actually print from the screen to your printer. Now, it's only available on certain printers, and I don't have a printer that's set up for this yet, but uh, you would just tap on Select Printer, and if you have a printer that works with it, it'll find it, and it'll work, and you can tell it how many copies, and then hit Print. You, you can print email, documents, website pages, whatever you want with this. And again, it's just a matter of hitting that button and hitting print, and that will air print. Now, another really cool feature is the air play. And air play is really cool. Uh, I do not actually have a um, Apple TV set up right this instant. I have not actually set it up yet, so it's not showing up. but. Here's a YouTube video, and if I had my Apple TV set up, there would be a little button right next to the time here that I could touch, and it would actually ask me if I wanted to play this on my Apple TV. And I would just tap the Apple TV. It would automatically start playing this on my Apple TV. And that is really cool. And it's not just for YouTube videos. You can play podcasts, movies, anything you have in your um, iTunes, you can now play those full screen on your HDTV with AirPlay. So that's another great new feature of iOS 4.2. Some other features are the email, some new email features. You now get a unified inbox. So you can have, for example, you know, many different emails. You can have different Gmail addresses. You can have mobile me. You can have different emails. You can have all the emails from, from your different accounts show up in one unified inbox and that's really nice and then you also get threaded email so if there's many different emails in a thread you'll get a threaded view so you can see those and um, those will be easier to read and easier to follow some so you'll get some great new email improvements it's also some new settings and for example the ipad gets new wallpaper so you go to brightness and wallpaper and then go to wallpaper and it gets all the wallpaper that the iPhone had before, so you do get some new wallpaper. Another really cool setting, which is new, is the restrictions setting. So if you enable that, you can create a password, and then you can restrict certain things. So let's say you're going to give 
you let somebody borrow this iPad or you're going to let one of your kids use it, you can make it so they can't install apps or they can't delete apps or you can turn off location services. You can turn off in-app purchases, all those types of things. So you can restrict a lot of things and turn those off and on whenever you want. So that's another great feature of new iOS 4.2. And the last thing I'm going to show you is in Safari, we now have in-page search, which is really cool. Actually, I guess I should call it on-page search. So let's say we want, to, we want to search for the word app. In the past, we'd go up here and type in the little Google search box. It would give us suggestions on Google for that word, but not on this page. Now, if we type in the word app, we're going to notice we still have the Google suggestions, but underneath that, it says on this page, there's 29 matches for the word app. So if I click on that, now it'll show me where the word app is on this page. And then I can hit next to find the next match. So you can now search for words on the page, just like you can on your regular Mac or PC that easily. So again, some great new features. I love iOS 4.2, the folders, the multitasking, all the new improvements. It's a free download, so I highly recommend you install it for your iPad, iPhone, or iPod Touch, and have fun playing with it. Check it out. I give it a 10 out of 10 rating, of course.